All right, welcome back to part two. This is uh, part two of video editing in Corel uh, Video Studio Editor. Uh, if you missed part one, I'll have the link in the description box below. You can check that out. That is discussing uh, basic editing in uh, Corel Video Studio Editor, and that would just give you the basics of getting started. Uh, today we'll be talking about transitions and uh, when to use them and uh, which ones are best for which uh, point that you're trying to get across in your video. Uh, Typically, using different transitions will give your video a different effect. So if you're going for a really mellow uh, you know, discussion in your videos, that's uh, basically what I'll be showing you how to do today. Uh, right there is just a favorites that I have uh, pinned there. But here are all of the transitions that you will find in Corel Video Studio, Studio X6, which is time 6. Um, not sure which version you'll have, but uh, this, is, this is what they have in 6. As you can see, there's quite a few of them there, and each window displays typically what each transition will look like when you insert it into uh, your video clips there. And uh, basically all you have to do is just grab onto it and drop it into the slot down there. So today we're just going to focus on just the ones that I typically use, which will give you just a really mellow, uh, smooth flowing video. So what I have down here are two identical video clips, which are blocked out. I'll go ahead and open up the first one here. And this is a nice little inside trick here for Corel Studio. Uh, you can block out each one of your timelines to work with each, uh, each particular bar here. But uh, that's just a side note. So we'll go ahead and highlight the one that I have here. This is a, just raw images or raw video here. It does not have any transitions, which I'll let it play out here. And you can see these are just rolling shots of uh, this is from my Ruger versus Ruger video. And basically the narrative in this video is me discussing these two rifles. And you can see there's uh, some upcoming shots of just the rifles and discussion, and then talking about the ammo uh, that the rifles use. And then on to shooting the rifle. Uh, so there's uh, different parts of the video here which I'll use different transitions for, and I'll explain that here in just a second. All right, so that's basically just the, uh, the video that I had. So we'll go ahead and highlight the second bar, which has all of the transitions in it that I installed ahead of time for the video. And I'll talk about why I used each one and which what each one does. Uh, on, a, on a first note here that uh, you can overload your videos with too many transitions. And uh, what that does is that creates your, your video that you're you know, creating will have just a really mushy feel to it if you put too many transitions into it. Uh, especially all of the same transition, or if you transition, uh, you know, using too many flashy transitions, it will it, it'll make it hard to follow. Uh, so don't get carried away with your transitions. And if you follow this right here, uh, you should be able to create a nice, smooth flowing video. So up front, when the video starts, what I did was I inserted this uh, fade to black transition. I typically use that whenever I start a video because what that does is it kind of gives you the impression of, you know, like curtains rising, uh, just the, the video starting. So you can see here as I play it out, it goes from black and it just has a nice smooth transition from black to starting the video. I typically use this at either the beginning or the end or if I'm changing the subject in the video, which I'll show you here in just a second. So as the video rolls, you can see I'm talking about if there was a narrative, I'm talking about the rifles in this video. Uh, Going on to the next clip, I'm still talking about the same rifles, still referring to these same rifles. And what I did for the next transition from clip to clip is I used a crossfade. Now, a crossfade is pretty is a pretty basic uh, transition. You can use a fade to black, but again, when I use fade to black, it's it's typically if I'm if I'm changing the uh, the discussion about the video. So I use a crossfade for this first one here. And again, all you do is just grab it from the top and then drop it into your timeline in between the two video clips. So you can see a nice crossfade just kind of keeps you on subject with what you're talking about, just kind of fades into the next clip. Now, again, you can overload your video with transitions. So what I did for the next clip here as it plays on is since the video was stationary, I just left it as a just a straight cut. I didn't uh, insert any transition. It's just video clip to video clip. And a little inside secret is what that does is that pretty much wakes up your viewer um, unintentionally uh, when it goes from clip to clip. It's just an abrupt start and abrupt stop there, uh, which typically uh, kind of jars the viewer's um, you know, uh, attention span, basically bring, comes back to the video uh, when you use clips like that. 
So in this video, I, I uh, utilized that little trick there. And then since uh, the upcoming clip is me talking about the ammo, which is a different subject, and it's not talking about the rifles anymore, I used a fade to black uh, out, and then curtains rise again, talking about something else, which is the ammo. So you can see how well that works out, talking about the guns, switching subject to the ammo. So I typically use those fade to black transitions for that. The next upcoming clip is me shooting the rifle. Again, that's changing the subject from the ammo being used to the rifle being shot. So I used a fade to black transition. And you can see how well that works out. So if there was a narrative, I'd be talking about the ammo here, which comes into play, and then switching to talking about shooting the rifle. Now, since this is a completely different subject and the image is actually not panning or zooming or anything like that, you, I could have left this as a transition-less uh, uh, transition there. I could have just left it without a transition at all. Could have just been video clip to video clip, which pops right into you shooting the rifle or whatever it is that you're, the effect that you're going for. But as you can see, that's a nice, uh, again, talking about a different subject, drops in, smooths out, and then uh, brings you right into shooting the rifle there. You can see me shooting the rifle. And then at the end, what I did was just added just a little flare to the end of the video. Otherwise, it would have been just me walking away. And you can see it's a nice uh, flash out there, which is a nice, kind of a nice effect. So I'll let this play out here just in one second here. And you can see the difference between the first video clip and this initial video clip. You see a nice smooth roll in, transition, talking about the same subject. I see Corel's having a hard time keeping up with it, but... So bringing the attention of the viewer straight back to the video, you leave a cut, fade out, talking about a different part of the video here, which is the ammo, and then on to the shooting of the gun. And then at the end, I throw in a nice little uh, something, you know, to umph the video on its way out. So you can see how that works out there. So again, you can overload your video with too many transitions. Again, it kind of makes it like mushy. Uh, I could demonstrate that, but uh, it'd be running out of time here. So um, again, don't overload it. Use them wisely. Uh, there are plenty to choose from, and I can see how uh, being new to the transitions, you'd want to try to use some really different creative um, transitions. Now, keep in mind, when you use these different transitions, it... it, it uh, displays your video in a different manner for each transition you use. Now, if I was using some really wild uh, transitions, it would give that video that feel. Uh, so if you want to choose them wisely and you want to make sure you get the right ones for, the, for the, the message that you're trying to get across in your video. So that's pretty much it for transitions. Uh, I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much. Um, if you want to see uh, a different uh, um, angle on this, on using transitions, just let me know and I'll make another video. Uh, but uh, this, I tried to make it as basic as possible here. So if you enjoyed this, give me a little like down there. And every little like helps. And we will be doing some more of these videos uh, and tutorials for you guys that are looking to uh, uh, spruce up your video editing skills here. So until then, we'll catch you guys next time.